You're listening to Company Men. I'm Jared Carter. And I'm Chuck Tomertick. We're introverts, and if we can come out of our comfort zones long enough to host company, you can too. What if the only person to listen to the podcast was the original Blue Ranger? Oh, I don't like him. No, of course not. He's a loser. I would burn the podcast. They went out, they did a, I think they just went to every library in the country looking for the worst nerd. No, they got all the nerds. <laughs> they got all the nerds and morphed them And they them blended together. them up. <laughs> he's actually, he's, he's, a, he's that, a nerd zord. But a, he's a nerd zord. He's a nerd zord. Jared, you brought me something. I sure did. I brought you. It's been a while, uh, I think, since we did Lagunitas. Yeah, at, at least a week. Know, at least a week. Uh, one of my favorite uh, breweries, and this is actually one of my favorite beers. It's yeah. a limited release called Little Something Extra Ale. And you got to say something. Something. Because that's the way it says it. Right. S- it's spelled something. It rhymes with, with pumping. With pumping or jumping. Yeah. Or, or dumping, stumping, or muffins. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yep, we hit the end of it. A little something extra ale. Why? So I've had little something ale. What's extra about Well, the other it? one is actually little something something okay. ale. This is little something extra ale. And the little something extra, there's uh, more hops. It's a slightly higher alcohol content. I think this one is like 8.5%. The mm. other is 7.5. A little different there. It's just... a. Uh, like I've told you before, I like the extreme version of things, like the the most thing that it can be mm-hmm. of the thing that it is. Mm-hmm. And this beer, this is as something that. as it gets, and it's this is the something really, 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 really good. It's like fifty percent barley, fifty percent wheat. Both of the mm-hmm. beers are so it kind of has a little bit of a different flavor than maybe some of the other IPAs you've had. Uh, it's really good, seventy two IBU. So it's bitter. Do you like bitter beers? I like bitter beers. Okay, I'm definitely done listening to you talk about it. Uh, well, I'm something talk about that, it well, some more. Yeah, nope. When I was uh, a little nope. boy. Uh, when I listen, was a little boy. Something I want the folks at home to know as we delve into this uh, next uh, forty to sixty minutes is we are uh, in the hottest possible place. Uh, yeah. we record this podcast in my house, uh, which currently has a broken air conditioner. And so I'm looking very, very, very much forward to drinking this very cold beer that you're going to pour for me now. Yeah, this, this should help in this house, which is what, what would you say the temperature is in here right now? Uh, it, do you want that in Kelvin? Because <laughs> I think that's the only thing that goes high enough. Well, I'm going to pour this that's for you. Science I'm going to help you out here. Oh, yes. This is. That was not easy for me. And it's because my hands are sweaty, and it's hard to hold a yes. bottle opener. For, for for those for the visual folks out there, I just want you. to... We've taken off most of our clothes. We've been stripping down for the last hour. We're completely drenched. Uh, I I don't know, Jared, if you remember mm-hmm. when you we do this little thing where we give each other nice beers on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, you gave me a Bud Light Platinum instead. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I do remember it, though. I do remember you did that. You brought me a Bud Light Platinum. It was very, very hard. I'm uh, sorry. To drink. And so I said to myself, uh... I hate Jared. I hate this person so much. What can I do? (laughs) What can I do to kill them? Without, uh, without... Stooping to his level. So can I just say... How can I give him something difficult? You brought me something, Chuck. Something very difficult to drink. What'd you bring? This is actually a really, really wonderful thing. Uh, and it, it's only going to be better uh, drinking it here in this um, uh, oven slash sauna. Uh, I brought you a nice cold beer. Yes. In this 90 degree house and, and you brought me I brought you warm. nice... Room temperature uh, whiskey, but this is this is actually pretty uh, excellent stuff. Uh, this is Old Forester Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Oh, uh, 
So this is actually good. That you're not trying to get me back for the Bud Light. Um, I or said is this I really wasn't. Bad? I said I was not going to stoop to your level. I would never give you something that I wouldn't drink myself. And Can in I? fact, you'll notice that this bottle, uh, even though recently purchased, has a fair bit missing from it because I have been drinking it uh, myself. It smells. Ooh, that smells real nice. It's real. It is. It is real flavorful. I'm gonna pour it here for you right now. Are you tricking me? Because it smells so sweet. I'm worried that you put some of your in-laws' maple syrup in there. It is. It is sweet. It is a sweet. A lot of uh, a lot of the bourbons uh, that I like are a little bit sweeter, but I like things that are a little uh, firier. Um, yeah. Tell me what you 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 hesitated zero seconds. Well, I just wait. I wanted. I, I wanted. Did you? You haven't tasted yours. I haven't. Yet, no. So I, I was, was thinking we could toast each other. Okay. One of the things that I hate about podcasts that feature beer is when people say cheers. So what should we say instead? Uh, tears. Tears, tears, tears for fears. Tears, tears for, for fears. fears. <laughs> Everybody wants to rule the world. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Here uh, you go. Hmm. I'm going to talk first. Mm -hmm. That is sweet. Yep. That is sweet and very, very good. I don't know how to talk about whiskey. Oh, Just like right. I don't know how to talk about beer. Right. But this is really tasty. Talking really isn't our strong suit <laughs> no. at all. You know, I was so worried that you were going to bring me uh, something that I didn't like. That I've actually been taking precautions for a mm. few weeks now. Um, I like to take a beer out of your fridge and hide it behind the curtains. <laughs> Jared has just done a magic trick in my house. Uh, here, here I have a Lagunitas 12th of uh, Never Ale, which we actually had a few weeks ago. I'm gonna you crack pulled this that open. from behind my ear. How did you do that? <laughs> I, I will not be fooled, sir. Mm, hoppy, but I'm, gonna, I'm still going to... Uh, Sip on this whiskey. It's a really good whiskey. So, uh, to be honest, I was looking for a different whiskey, one that I have had in the past called Old Granddad, which is one of the most difficult to drink things that I've had on, at first drink, but I really enjoy it. Uh, and this was as close as I could find uh, to mimic it. Um, I think it tastes a bit like sweet corn that's currently on fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I really like it though. Uh, the the old granddad is a little more aggressive. If you go for the hundred fourteen proof, it's just it is straight. Proof. It's angry. Wow. It is set out to hurt you, uh, but it's so sweet and and so smooth after that initial burn. This I think does the same thing, although not quite to the same degree. But I it's do really, really like interesting it. to taste the beer and then taste this. Yeah, it, it gives it a whole different. Uh, flavor. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what they call a uh, bad idea. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to set that aside so that I can still do a podcast. I haven't talked about this at all. A um, little something extra ale. Give it a taste. What do you think? I think that... Um, so there, it's. I think it's dry hopped because it's got that like really kind of like citrusy piney hop, but it's not it what I'm used to, like the citra kind of hops. Um, look at me, I'm sounding all, sounding all go. like I know what I'm saying, I don't. Um, but I dig it, I dig it. I got, I got kind of burnt out, to be honest, on that mm -hmm. like super hoppy, especially like the dry hop, and it was always that same, like the same few hops that a lot of like, especially the Northwest breweries were using. Uh, and I got, I got pretty, uh, pretty fatigued on that. Uh, this one brings a nice touch to it. I think they must use a different hop in that. Um, so I'm really digging kind of that that flavor. It's a whole. Of it's that. a I whole really like that different double IPA. Yeah, to me, it's, I really really enjoy it. I'm, I'm always super excited when it comes out. That's one of the things that I love most about Lagunitas. They their their regular IPA is not my go to mm -hmm. normally. Um, I don't actually really enjoy it, but mm -hmm. they're limited releases that come out throughout the year this one i cannot wait to bring you a bottle of brown sugar oh, yeah. uh come october one of my absolute favorite beers they just come out with such wacky cool things and not like dogfish head which just comes out with weird garbage sometimes oh come on i'm kidding i love dogfish head they're 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 cool but some of the stuff is seriously just so freaky weird i can't <laughs> enjoy it uh but lagunitas comes out with some really cool stuff yeah um, speaking of beer and brewing and hops and all this stuff, you at a brew day last weekend, how did that go? I posted a picture of brew day. I was so excited. I took a week off from work and come Saturday I was going to brew 
a beer that Sierra Nevada, another brewery that I really enjoy, had released the notes to. They'd actually converted their recipe for it mm-hmm. into a five-gallon homebrew all-grain recipe. I was super excited yeah. to to make this beer. Here's where I ran into some trouble. So I'm talking to you home brewers here. And maybe if you have any suggestions, you can send them my way. I was reaching out to one of my good friends, Nate, as this whole thing was going down and he was trying to walk me through it. But at the time, I just didn't have any solutions. That's a good time to try and figure out what you're doing is in the middle of it. Oh my goodness. It was so disappointing. (laughs) It was so disappointing. Okay. So I'm, I'm really excited and I just kind of have the whole house to myself. Mm -hmm. Trish has taken the boys They've gone off to her sister's place. They're having a little barbecue pool party type thing. Just gave yep. me gave me this opportunity to rest, relax, and brew, which is so incredibly therapeutic yeah. when things go right. And I was I had done all my calculations. I had prepared everything. I'd been thinking about this for days leading up. I was it was going to be perfect. And when I went to boil the wort, so for those of you who don't speak the language, and I think probably a lot of the people who listen to this do. So probably a pretty a good lot. Venn diagram yeah, there. Yeah, you, you take your grain and you you get it hot enough and you let it sit in a bath of water in a mash tun until the sugars are released. And mm-hmm. then you put all of that sugary, watery, grainy, rye, just smelling wonderfulness mm-hmm. into your pot that you're going to boil this in right and so i put that in there and i got i got all my wort it's called wort and i went to boil my wort and i was supposed to boil my wort for 90 minutes and now, instead you boiled the wort on your foot i don't have it's a, wart a on common my foot. mistake it's that a was common good. mistake that was that was, see that word <laughs> that was horrible stop <laughs> all right okay so, tell me what happened with so your wart. i go i go to boil the wort it's supposed to boil for 90 minutes. I put a thermometer in the wort and I watch the temperature rise, rise, rise. And I think I have this really big burner on my stove that's meant mm-hmm. for boiling things. It gets all the way up to 210 degrees, two degrees short of where I need it to be in order mm-hmm. to boil. The only thing that I can imagine was happening was the kettle uh, mouth of the kettle was too wide. Mm-hmm. We, no- we normally use this kettle for making tamales, Yeah. right? It was just a little too wide, and I think it was releasing too much of the heat out the top. It couldn't get to a boil. It was driving me nuts. And so I started doing whatever I could because i got to get this thing to a boil so I can start tossing in the hops and get it to where I need it to be. So I put a baking sheet over the top. Perfectly fine. Sure. And that doesn't work. And so I tried just like standing around it. I'm thinking the insulation that is my body. I raised the temperature of my home a, sh- a few degrees. You should have brought it here because it's brought at it least here. 225 degrees in my house I right now. I wouldn't have even had to use the stove. <laughs> it would have just boiled. Like my blood is right now. Uh, and, and so this isn't working. So I do the next logical thing, which is I start taking out dish rags, which I are uh, more like dish towels, I guess you would call them. I don't know the difference, but I know there's a way you're supposed to fold them and I don't mm. do it right. <laughs> but I start placing dish towels on top of this uh, kettle you and I have very different definitions of logical, by the oh way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> right? What was going on in my head? I just had to save this. I had to save it, and I did the exact opposite. I The kettle was so tall, I thought that the towels were far enough from the flame underneath. Nope. They caught fire. I noticed yes. this. as I'm not even looking at the oven. I just start to see the rest of the room turn orange. Yeah. And as I turn around, there's a fire and I, I was able to air it out before. No, of course, if you burn, burn your house, house down, down, your how your beer is going to get warm enough. That's I, the trick. The only thing that's kind of a bummer is I have really good renters insurance, and I could we we get totally put up could. in a hotel for a while, which I love hotels. It's so a little a part it's a little known a little... fact, but Lagunitas actually burns down their brewery every time they make a little something extra. <laughs> that's how they. So <laughs> that's the extra. Oh, so I. I should have just let it burn. You could have. You could have really had something. Parts there. of this burnt rag ended up inside of the kettle. Ended up in the wort. Oh boy! For a second, I thought about just continuing and just waiting. But beer is a month long thing <laughs> that I'd have to wait for just to find out that just it tastes horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, this so tastes I an awful it. lot like 
rag. Uh, you know what I did though, and I learned I learned something special about myself, which I love because I feel like I'm special and I love learning special things about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, but <laughs> kind of true. Uh, I I realized that in that moment, as soon as I started to say, kind of like when I did when I burned that pizza. And was like, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get angry. Yeah. I said, I'm not going to get angry. I'm going to go to McDonald's and I'm going to get a double cheeseburger and a large French fry mm. and a Diet Coke or a Coke Zero. And as soon as I thought that, my brain was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, just pour it out. No, this is good. You're going to reward yourself. It's Cause, fine. Because we've given up. Yeah, we've given we've up. Give- and that's what happens when you go to McDonald's. When you ever go to McDonald's, you're like, this was planned. You go to McDonald's and you say, I've given up. This, Something this is- caught fire. It was either my relationships or my job. <laughs> Something. Somebody's been fired or something's been fired and now I must eat. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. I need to jam this in my face so I don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the only thing that would have been worse was like eating that with a Bud Light Platinum. Yeah. I feel. That's yeah. that's just when you know it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that not on the menu yet? The Bud Light Platinum? Yeah. I think it might be a secret menu item. Do they I... have a secret menu? Like In N Out? Can you order? Can you, you order, order but like Pla- you order you your Big be- Mac animal style? No, you do they? <laughs> no. Uh, if you want a Bud Light Platinum and McDonald's, you can't just order it. You have to walk in crying. <laughs> if they see you're crying, they'll be like, "Come here, this Bud's for you." <laughs> it's how they do. It's not their slogan. It's anymore. not their. Sl- <laughs> no, is that not their slogan? I have no idea. Um, cool. Did you have you had any kitchen failures? A little bit. Uh, a little bit. There's been a lot of failure in my house lately. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but it's so hot here. The cool thing is you can just put cheese on top of tor- of, of tortilla chips and it'll turn yeah. into nachos. Uh, we were frying eggs on my dinner table. It's super fun. Um, <laughs> it really is a bajillion degrees in here. It's so hot. It's so hot. And we had to shut the, we got to tell people this, we had to shut the doors, <laughs> turn off the fans because of the cicadas. All the windows are closed. Cause, cause no the fans, cicadas are just, no eh. air. No, oh, nothing. It's so bad. We're sweating so bad right now. <laughs> we're, we're delusional. I can't. I can't even. I can't see. There's sweat in my eyes. So it's making it very hard to do anything in the house. And uh, we're recording this on a Monday. Um, we just came out of the weekend, and uh, my whole family just sat in the house melting because, we, like, we've been yeah. having the you know the the initiative of like we got to get out of the house, we got to do this. But it's like it takes this like physical and psychological toll on you. Uh, yeah. And now, like, by Sunday, we just can't move. Like, we get home from church and we just lay down and we just take off. We're all just in our underwear or less, and we're just laying on the tile. And just let. I just. It. I feel like you should reach out to some high-powered executives and invite them into your home for a sweat lodge <laughs> uh, experience. Come into my home and purge yourself of your, you know, yes, yeah, absolutely, and, and and hallucinate and just charge them so much money. So by uh, by like Sunday night, it's like eight o'clock, and mm-hmm. nobody has moved for like six hours, right? Mm-hmm. That's a bad uh, sign. Uh, my children stumble out delirious, just with like hollow eyes, and they say, Dad, can we have dinner? And I've like <laughs> forgotten, like at this point, I'm too hot to eat yes. or think about eating or put oh, on clothes to go get food. That's sad. So I, I say, yes, I need to, like the biological imperative kicks in, and yes, these things that I created must live on. Uh, so I, <laughs> it's like, what do you feed them? You're like, oh, well, the cat's dead. It's just <laughs> it's already cooked. It's already cooked. Oh boy, just skin it and win it, <laughs> boy. Right. So I stumble into the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I grab several towels to wipe myself off, um, and we have like. This has been sapping our energy for for like a week now. Uh, we have not been to the store. We have not purchased any food. There's nothing. There's nothing. Uh, so I'm I'm now doing that move that I'm sure everyone is familiar with, where I dig to the back of the pantry and the fridge. Mm-hmm. Just like there's got to be something. Yes. The kids have already eaten all of the spaghettios and the lunchables. Uh, yeah. We've already gotten into all the little apple they're sauce. They're eating so much because they're packages. sweating out so many calories, <laughs> and because just... we can't move, so they have to fend for themselves. <laughs> 
so I'm like, I've got to find something. I've got to feed them. And so I do. I dig out. Um, we, we mentioned this actually on a, on a previous episode. Like if you have to make a meal at a moment's notice, you uh-huh. should have ramen in your pantry. And show sure enough, at the bottom back of the pantry, there's uh, four packs of ramen. What flavor? Uh, ooh, three different kinds actually. Two chicken, one oriental, one beef. I don't like beef. I don't either. I don't even like chicken. I like Oriental. The Oriental is great. Just f- like fun fact, pro tip for you. Um, first off, you should not use the packets or use them very sparingly if you do, but mix the Oriental with another one, the chicken or the beef. Mm. And it's very tasty. It's good, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 So we pull out the ramen packets. Uh, I've got now, like, at, at least this is something. Uh, but I, the, I, 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 I get this, you know, this like this little sense of pride, like I've got to yeah. make. Now I've like started moving, and the, the chemicals in my brain twenty seven cents started, worth of food. Yeah, yeah. I've got to make something good, and so yeah. I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. Um, I go through the spice drawer. I find some stuff that looks interesting. I find a uh, a pack of uh, or a bottle of hot sauce that okay. someone brought back to me uh, for me from Hawaii. Uh, um, capital of the hot, the hot sauce capital right? of the world. Uh, it's like a pineapple, mango, yada, something hot sauce that uh-huh. I had forgotten about and was buried very deeply in my uh, pantry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is inspiration. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got the ramen packets. I've got the hot sauce. Let me see what I can do. So, like, the, the, uh, obviously the synapses weren't totally firing here, but sure. I went from that to, you know, like, let me do, let me do like a stir fry. Um, so I'm digging through the fridge. I've got, uh, you know, a couple halves of some peppers from something I made earlier in the week. I've got some barbecue chicken that mm-hmm. we made a few nights ago, yeah. uh, that needs to be eaten very soon. A couple pieces of that. Uh, I just start pulling stuff out. I've got some scallions. I've got some, uh, some, some garlic and I'm, and I'm, now I'm just chopping. I'm going to town. Uh, I've got the water boiling for the ramen. I'm, I'm, Toweling off every few seconds. You just use your sweat as the water. Yeah. To make the noodles. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it, because salt. ramen's not salty enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm 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 now frying up the the vegetables in the in the pan with some mirin, which is a Japanese like sweet cooking wine that I mm. found not that long ago that has changed my life. Um, How is this different from Helen Mirin? Uh, it's almost exactly the same. Well, These no, because jokes. I put Helen Mirren in my top ramen. I just wondered. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Really classes it up. <laughs> it does. Uh, so, uh, and then I threw the ramen in, and now, like, I've, oh, man, this is cool. And I'm, I'm still digging in the pantry as, like, all this stuff is frying. I find a, a, a tin, a little can of, of peanuts that I bought from my father-in-law <laughs> when he was here six months ago. Sweet peanuts don't go bad. No. I throw the peanuts in Oh, the gosh. <laughs> And you were delusional. <laughs> it was very, was not in the right state of mind. <laughs> uh, I, I throw some ginger in there, and I throw some, you know, soy sauce yeah, in yeah, there. Okay, and it's so you like, put the whole kitchen in there. <laughs> just was, like literally did it everything. Taste was, good. And then and everything, and I get it all. The ramen cooks, the noodles cook. I throw them into the pot. I'm like stirring it around. Like I'm now really feeling it. I don't know if what I'm doing is a thing that people should do, but I'm really feeling it. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I'm tossing it around. I throw the scallions in. I'm. And I, I chop up like, oh man, this needs a little pop of color. I chop up some fresh thyme, froom, throw that on top. This was so good. It was so good. Or maybe it was really bad and we're just it was so really good. far gone from humanity. Just like our ba- brains are so addled. But my family sat around the table in with with just like in the, yeah. towels and fans blowing on us <laughs> and towels wiping our and enjoyed this and meal. And they love this meal. And it was so Good. So I, that was a little flipperoo. That was yeah, a failure a on failure. my part okay. uh, to forget that we had to eat nice. and then flip that around. And this came out like I a really wonderful I caught my evening. house on fire yeah. and you fed your family. I accidentally made a beautiful meal. meal. Yeah. Chuck, we're introverts. Oh, yeah. We are horrible introverts. You can tell by how we're talking on the internet. Because, to all the world. That's no, it's weird, it's weird tell. right? So we're we're simultaneously, we're a weird breed. And, and some people, the people who are closest to me know that I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, the people who don't take the time to know me, uh, which everybody should take the time to know me. Yeah, they, because they, they, they all, they all think I'm an extrovert. Because, okay, so a few things that we have in common. 
We love attention mm-hmm. for some reason. Yep. Uh, we don't mind getting because up. This is the front. best thing in the world. We don't mind getting up in front of people. We don't mind putting our voices out there to mm-hmm. the to the dozens of people who it's, listen to this podcast. It's very hard to not hear us if you're within five miles. We yell everything that we say, <laughs> <laughs> which is ridiculous. But but it comes as a surprise to some people that we love having people into our homes. We both do. Is. Nobody, nobody ever, ever, ever believes me when I tell them for the first time that I'm an introvert. That I, I, they, I get such incredulous looks. Um, but I like, I feel like for those of you who are introverts, I think some of you probably are already on like on the same wavelength uh, with this. But for those of you who aren't, if we can like dispel a little bit of the myths around There's this, a few. right? It's not. It's it's not that I don't like people or being around people or certainly that I don't like attention, as you said, right. it's my one of my favorite things. You'll find that a lot of the people who get in front of others are not the type of people who are really good in a one-on-one right. conversation with someone. Uh, it just exhausts me so much and I get so anxious about it sometimes in certain circumstances that it's hard for me to sometimes imagine even leaving the house, right? I, I'm the exact same way. Yeah. Um, and, and yet we're able to just like constantly have people over and have this. And I think, uh, it's a really natural inclination sure. to feel if, if you're an introvert out there right now to feel like I'm an introvert, which means I can't host, but, I shouldn't have people. But over. here's the thing. And here's what you're going to learn tonight is for both Chuck and I, there's a reason why we continue to do this, and it's because even as introverts, we have found that not only do the rewards outweigh the difficulty of hosting as an introvert, but as an introvert, there's something about hosting that we'll talk about it, but it it gives you a sense of control. It, yeah. it, it, it It's actually better for you. Then I think going to somebody else's house. I'm gonna, mean, it's a completely different. It's a different ball game. I'm going to argue that introverts are the best hosts. <gasps> this, Absolutely. All right. So, well, Chuck, I want to. I want to set up. We could just jump into application here, and we can mm-hmm. give people some steps, and we are absolutely going to do that. Yep. But let's acknowledge on the front end, without saying anything positive. Just like legitimately, what is bad oh, about hosting you're as introverts? Right in my wheelhouse. Yes, if you want to focus on the negative, <laughs> let's focus on the negative. Yeah, it's so it it's there's so much that can go wrong. Mm-hmm. There's just so many things that can happen when you're opening up your home, you're doing this whole thing. And all of that is happening essentially publicly. Obviously it's a public that you have selected to some extent, but it's happening in front of everybody. And for me as an introvert, when things go wrong, I need to be able to take that thing and think about it and figure out the right solution and then apply that solution. And then I can show everybody. But when I have people over when I'm, or, or, you know, when I'm around other people and something goes wrong, I have to deal with it there in the moment. It is not something that I am uh, naturally inclined to. Yeah. 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 For me, uh, one of the most difficult things is my, I, I am, I would say like I'm an 80, 20 Introvert, yeah. extrovert. You know, eighty eighty yeah. percent of the time I'm introverted, and then there's that twenty percent of the time you introverts out there who are who are like me, uh, you will have had this. Chuck, tell me if this has ever happened to you. You're like introvert Monday, introvert Tuesday, introvert Wednesday, <laughs> introvert Thursday, Friday, Saturday rolls around. You're like, I need people Let's over. Talk to everybody. Let's have them over. Um, and so you're you're extrovert uh, in the morning, you're extrovert in the afternoon, and about two hours before people show up <laughs> to the house, <laughs> you're an introvert again. And I know that you have been known to retire to your bed chamber <laughs> this uh in my son's birthday party i was so excited about having he for, so he wanted uh he wanted pulled pork which when your kid gets to that point where they say i That's want pulled pork win. instead of pizza or whatever for my birthday anything else you oh. may have messed up as a dad you did okay <laughs> and i've messed there. up so many things <laughs> but uh we had like oh gosh 50 people over I think, oh. yeah, it was it was over fifty, yeah. um, and I spent the first thirty minutes in my bedroom with the door locked, just laying on the bed, just processing, <laughs> and that's what I did. Yeah, which like is not cool. Host. Which is not yeah. cool to my wife. So there's got yeah, not good to yeah. Her. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. There's got to be then ways for us to do this better as introverts. Oh, there are so that we is. don't end up. Uh, quietly crying in our bedrooms whilst our guests. There was no crying. Arrived. There was no crying. <laughs> 
Tear, All right. Tears Fine. of joy. There oh. was no crying. For those of you podcast <laughs> listeners, I'm doing lots of air quotes. <laughs> Do you cry no when people come crying. over? crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So there's there's lots of things that are difficult, and I'm sure that many of you who are listening could probably add to that list. There's there's things that you find hard about this, and some of you still engage in hosting. You still approach this uh, and do your best. Some of you just say, I'm not going to touch it at all. And we're talking to both of you tonight. Um, I want to touch on a few things, Chuck, and I know that you have s- some strong thoughts on this subject, and you have a lot of background here. Yeah, one of um, the one of the one of the biggest things um, is just an awareness level, self awareness. Yeah, yeah, awareness of yourself, awareness of um, you know what I would call the fuel tank. Uh, yeah, there is a finite amount of energy that I can spend talking to other people before I need to not talk to anyone ever again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I get a little time by myself and then I uh, not talk to anyone ever again changes to, yeah, let's talk to some people again. Yeah. Uh, and just an awareness of that. I know that before I host a big get together, if I'm going to have a whole bunch of people over, I know that I need that time by myself. Right. If I can get the day off of work beforehand so that I'm not at work talking to people, certainly regardless of whether I can do that or not, I'm going to spend the evening before in quiet reflection, I'm going to send everybody, the children, the wife, off to bed. You're going to send your. I'm, you're going to send your wife. I'm going to bed. send my wife to bed. <laughs> you can't. You can't do that. I can retire to your chambers, lady. And the man has work to do. Oh, no, this no, 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 no. This is 2014. This you is, cannot do that. It's like two o'clock in the morning. She's very much in bed, and yeah. I'm very much awake and enjoying the time by myself, preparing things. Yeah, I'm getting sure. food ready. I'm cooking things that can be cooked ahead of time i'm putting together things i'm posting on facebook getting people excited i'm taking pictures right uh-huh. i am doing the things that i need to do but i'm doing them in my own little space with nobody invading and that just helps me to prepare that staying up all night on yeah. my own yeah. helps me to prepare for being uh, able then to talk to lots and lots That's of good. people I right like that, i know yeah. i need that time to charge up for me, um, I, I I absolutely agree. You know, two two different things changed my life in a big way. Uh, one was when we discovered the concept of a budget. Mm-hmm. There was a time in our early uh, adult lives, uh, adult lives, when we looked at money as just this infinite resource that you just pulled from <laughs> right? until all of a sudden you can't eat and you still have twelve more days until your next paycheck. I've only overdrawn <laughs> once this month. That's right. Oh my Been gosh, there. the number of overdraft <laughs> fees. Uh, so when we finally discovered, you know, we have a finite amount of resources and how to use those wisely so that we still have money left over whenever uh, the next paycheck rolls around was just tremendous for me. Um, and my wife really drove a lot of that. And, and then one of the things uh, that kind of came, I think, w- with more maturity and you know, also just things that I learned from other people who were introverts, who had, who were further along than me, was just this concept that you really have a, a finite amount of resources when it comes to just how much time you can spend around people. And mm-hmm. so one of the ways, you know, just like with our budget, we'll look at the next few weeks and we'll say, this is how much we can spend on groceries and this is what we'll do. Um, in the same way, I tend to look at hosting. If you're not looking at hosting with... Uh, like a long view, Mm -hmm. you're making a mistake. Really look at the next month. For me, in all honesty, I will almost always, I will host on a weekend and then I will at least take the following weekend off yeah. from hosting. I know that the so way that smart. we talk, we can it, we can make it sound like we host five nights a week. We absolutely don't. Um, we host, you know, once or twice a month. Most often, sometimes those months are like four or five times. Those are crazy <laughs> uh, months. Uh, but you know, for the most part, I I try to space it out, and yeah. I know you do too. And I and even within that, uh, that's like on a macro level, on a micro level, uh, the days surrounding kind of like you do. I, I, if I'm hosting on a Saturday, I generally won't have anything planned on a Friday night or on a Sunday. Yep. You know, just home time. Yep. Walk around in my pajamas. Everyone in my family owns a robe. The whole family. The whole family. The dog. The f- dog is not part of the, the family. 
Dog Ooh. is just there until we're hungry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I kid. <laughs> I kid. I kid. Dog lovers rejoice. I kid. He would almost definitely not eat his dog. You could take some small assurance in that. <laughs> Chuck, what about what about uh sometimes having conversations can be difficult. Yeah. So uh, what? And what by you, sometimes you mean all the time? <laughs> no, so, I mean, I mean, lots no, of times. I love to talk. It's one of my favorite things to do. And it, uh, as as I said, like it surprises people to hear that I'm an introvert, and it does like tire me to talk. But I do. I like to talk to people, but it does drain me. Um, I one of my favorite things about hosting, and again, why I prefer hosting to other kinds of social interaction. I can make sure I have I, I, I probably overplan this uh, as little as I plan some of the other aspects of my life, planning to make sure that I have uh, the proper like means out of a conversation. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, it maybe feels a little bit silly, but I do. I make sure that there's stuff going on so that if I find myself in a conversation that I just can't be in anymore for whatever reason, I just like I need to extricate myself. Sure. I have set up things. I make sure that there's some kind of like usually I'm cooking throughout a party. I have some kind of like a dessert is still going. Oh, or, so you can like walk away. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to get back to you. I got to go check on this other thing. Mm-hmm. Or I flit around f- between conversations. Uh, oh yeah, totally. That's a great. Uh, I, 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 I give me one second. Uh, these guys just came in. I need to make sure that I say hi, and then bloop, I go and I'm talking sure. to someone else, and <laughs> I make sure that none of my conversations go on for extended periods of time, That's which is what I love. The first like four and a half minutes of a conversation, uh-huh. and then after that, like I feel like i need to just like get out yeah yeah well uh, i'm right i'm right there with you uh one one thing that i've found to be helpful and hopefully this would be helpful to others out there uh you know oftentimes when we think about conversations we think of conversations in terms of it just completely rests on you to keep that conversation going and to some extent if you're the one that's hosting that's true but sometimes what we try to do is we try to produce conversation we feel like it's our responsibility to fill a majority of that Mm. that time think of it instead think think of it in terms of fueling the fire versus fanning the flame Mm. like you are not the fuel for the fire that is that conversation but you can quite easily i feel like in many cases uh get others to be the primary source sure. of conversation. So you're kind of walking yeah. around, you're kind of circulating, you see a group of people and you say, hey, I- Trump, right? <laughs> and then you move on. Yeah, And he- you've really fanned those flames. See, the way you said that, <laughs> some people may assume that uh, you're saying like, oh, mention politics and that. No, I, I mean, what he meant by that is Trump comes to most of my get togethers. Right. Which is. Pretty cool. And then you just kind of point it out. I point it out. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Trump. He's the president now. Yeah, Did you know president. that? Had you heard I that? I say it to him. Hey, you're the president now. Did you know that? And he goes, <laughs> mm, yeah, am I? Uh, <laughs> and so, no, what I like to do uh, is ask people questions about the things that they are interested in. It's such a good skill to have. It's one I have not learned yet. <laughs> I was at a get-together. A, a, a family had us over for dinner um, not too long ago. And... It was so cool. During the dinnertime conversation, uh, the the wife in this family, she looked at me and she said, "What is your What is your favorite thing to do?" And I just, I love that question. Who mm. doesn't love that question? Our favorite things are the things that we hold most dear to ourselves. Right now, you get to talk, talk about, about yourself, yeah. which is exactly so what like, you want to talk oh, about. Oh man, I was like, uh, boxes tied up with strings, kittens, mittens. <laughs> I just went off, yeah. uh, you know, but no, she did that to me. And then she turned to my son. She's like, Hey, what is your, what are some of your favorite things? What do you enjoy doing the most? Yeah. Um, and that sounds like a really simple question, but people love that question. And if they say, well, I like reading. Oh, well, who are your, some of your favorite authors? Mm. If you can like learn the flow chart that is question asking, um, really digging into what people care most about that's, is an easy way to keep the conversation. That's going. a killer suggestion. Now, like, uh, what have you fallen to the trap or how do you avoid falling into the trap maybe of you have other introverts that you have invited over and you ask questions and you get 
one word answers or, or short answers and then they're, you're, you're sitting in silence. Uh, I know one of the things that you are a big proponent of mm-hmm. in addition to like learning that questioning sort of nature and allowing people to talk is to like sort of think consciously about who you're inviting and don't invite your five quietest most reserved friends <laughs> the moment that you do that you realize the mistake five minutes into the <laughs> evening when you're looking at them they're looking at you and nobody is speaking right. and you're and you're both thinking wow this is what we're in for for the next two hours <laughs> buckle up settle in <laughs> no if you we all introverts attract extroverted friends because extroverted friends uh they like to talk and you are pretty good at listening yep. a lot of times so you're just going to be quiet while they speak and they love it uh so i like to have an extroverted friend on standby for almost mm-hmm. every occasion mm-hmm. i get that friend who likes to drive conversation who loves to ask good questions and i will invite that person uh in many cases there needs to be at least one extroverted people are wonderful and they they have gifts that we don't yep. that we don't even we can't even begin to understand and so yep. if you don't have an extrovert friend i suggest you get one and then invite them over to your barbecue get together yeah you you'll can... know that that <laughs> you'll be your able kids to birthday find party. Them. yeah because you'll be at a party and you'll be wondering why you haven't said any words in the last 45 minutes <laughs> and it's just because that extrovert friend is talking just filling up now the space friends. and we're all like yeah thanks uh and they're wonderful 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 people to have you they should make sure that they are. are at your your next get together for sure chuck you're a control freak I know this about you. Yep, a little bit. Uh, tell me, tell me why that can be useful as an introvert who's hosting. Yeah, so this is this is this is really getting to the heart of why I think a hosting is the best thing for introverts to do, and b I think introverts are the best hosts. You get to control every aspect, or not every aspect, but as many aspects of this interaction as possible. When sure. you're, say, at work, you can only control, you didn't, uh, probably didn't hire all of those people, and right. you can't control which people are there, and what things are going to come up, and what you're going to talk about. And certainly when you go to someone else's house, you don't maybe know what's going to be served mm-hmm. for dinner. You may end up in a situation where you're uncomfortable with the food, or the people, or the circumstances, or, the, you know, just the, the sure. entire environment. When you are in your own house and you are eating your own food and the people around you are the people that you invited yeah. you know that you are in the most comfortable space and yeah. you can now start to apply where some of the introvert skills come in which is you know the reflection and the you can sure. you can start to think about the best way to curate this get together in a way that is going to be pleasant for everyone this is yeah. where you know instead of just throwing a bunch of people into a space and say talk now which is so stressful to me <laughs> Right. I can have a little bit of a, you know, um, people are going to show up around this time and I know that that's going to happen. And I and I know what we're going to eat at, at around what time. I just know that things like sure. obviously things are yeah, going to go wrong. In, in, yeah. But, no, there there's all, something is always going to go wrong. But it's in it's uh, I don't like to use sports analogies very often, but because oh, there is there is get it wrong. There is something about home court advantage. There is something yeah. about this is your place where you are most comfortable. Yeah. Um, also, I'd say on the flip side of that, I mean, not only are you able to do that for yourself, but to some extent, you, you're able to do that for people who are coming into your home. You're able to, you, you can empathize, you know, with what they're going through as mm-hmm. somebody who's gone to other people's houses and you can say, Hey, what kind of music do you like? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like as a, as a, as an introvert, one of the things that I'm very aware of is when somebody comes into my house, I like to let them know the rules. I like to say, Hey, sure. look, you're coming in my house. Your kids can do whatever they want. They you can keep your shoes expect. on or There's not. Less and things to stress You can about touch it. whatever yes. you want. Yeah. And so that's, so that's helpful. You're able to relate to people. You're able to control your own thing, but you can also control it for others, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I love to carve out space. I always try and have quiet space in my house, too. And sometimes that ends up being for me, Mm -hmm. which I know it's there. And that's a little bit of a lifeline, right? And maybe that's the backyard or maybe that's one of the other rooms. Um, But you can also kind of identify that for other people, right? When they're there and you can see like, oh, this person is getting overwhelmed. This, This is a place that I have been before. Yeah. Right? You can offer that up as like, hey, if you want to like 
Chuck, wait, 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 real quick though, what is the introvert's unspoken place that should always be there in every home that they visit? The bathroom. The bathroom. It's so good. It's the so worst. Good, the, right? Listen, if you, if you, <laughs> whether you are an introvert or you are an extrovert, if you want to serve your introvert friends well, put a lock on your bathroom door. Is this an introvert thing or is this just a this human a, everybody thing? Everybody's like, hey, come no, on No, extroverts in. leave the door open. <laughs> you go to their house and the door's just wide open and they're like, welcome, everybody. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> just just uh, evacuating yeah. myself. <laughs> no, that's not that's not the case. But I just mean, for me, honestly, like when I go to somebody's house for a party, um, if I get overwhelmed, even if I don't need to go, I'll just be like, hey. I'll go um, step uh, into the step into the bathroom. The rest so, room, the rest room yeah. to rest a little bit. Yeah. Another thing, get a couch and put it in your restroom. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, some nice incense, Ooh. maybe some books to read. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and a, put a lock on your door. <laughs> Put a lock on your door. This is any yeah. If you have kids, you understand. Like obviously, most oh, adults have if, some form of manners, but children have none. No, they have none at all, and they you, will if, enter whatever space you're in. If you've ever had to go to the bathroom and hold the door closed with your foot, uh, <laughs> we've all, we've all had no. to do it at some point. Put a lock on your bathroom door. All right, let's talk about ending the evening because I feel like we should end this conversation. Uh, you get to the end of the evening. Yeah. It needs to be over. Your your tank is now empty. Yep. It's 6.30 p.m. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can, I can. Welcome to my house. Yeah. You can leave. Yeah. How do, how do you how do you uh, how do you end the conversation? Yeah. Uh, be- end the evening kindly. Right. That's the <laughs> trick. <laughs> because you can end it. Certainly. Mm-hmm. I, before I tell you how I do this, I want to tell you about my 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 favorite way that I have ever seen an evening ended. And that is um, from my my grandfather in law, my wife's grandfather. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was getting considerably up there in years when I witnessed uh, this interchange, this exchange. Um, he was uh, like round about like ninety two at this point. Okay, and he had a bunch of people over. Had family. Everyone had gathered around at his place, and he decided at whatever time it was that it was time to be done (laughs) and he looked around at all of his closest family and he said to them well i'm home i wish to hell you were (laughs) and the the point got across but you can't (laughs) but as but as a 30 year old man you can't do that i've tried that line and it doesn't work i haven't tried that hey guys uh, <laughs> that's that's me. That's not your voice. That's that's the, no, impression. that's the voice. That's the general. It's a thirty-year-old. 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 Hey guys, uh, I'm home. I sure as hell wish that you were. You would sound like the biggest. You have to be over ninety you to say the that. Biggest. You have I to be over ninety. To be, but as but as, you know, he, you know, he started saying it in his like forties. As a quick sidebar, I can't wait to be ninety. Oh, oh just the things you can get away with. Wait. Oh, I got stories for you, my friend. I just, I'm, I feel like it's going to fit me like a glove. <laughs> I feel like it will, too. I think <laughs> you're going to be hilarious. So, okay, okay, okay. well, I'll tell you how I handle it, then you yeah. tell me how you handle yeah. it. I, 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 uh, I handle it one of two ways. I've gotten to the point, I've worked really hard at this. I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can say, guys, we have a big day tomorrow. Um, it's time for us to go to bed. And just kind of leave it at that. And yeah. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But people are generally like, oh, well, thank you. Because we all we also did not know when to leave. You right. know? They don't right. say that. But I see it in their eyes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is if it's um, if they're really close friends, and I've done this to a few different pairs of really close friends, uh, they know that the evening is largely over when I walk into the living room and just lay down on the couch and go to sleep. <laughs> You do a lot of sleeping. I, I'm a sleepy man. To... Well, this is it. Like, is the, when I'm in a situation that stresses me out, I go to sleep. I do it in my in-laws' house. I would sit on a chair in the living room yeah. and just fall asleep during right. dinner. I don't care. I just <laughs> this is my body going. Let's hide. <laughs> you just power down. <laughs> what do you? Okay, so how do you handle it? Uh, yeah, it really similar. Actually, I find that just bringing it up overtly. But politely yeah. is the best way. And the line that I've been using recently uh, and that has been working pretty well for me. Is anyway. I am home. I wish you guys would go to hell. <laughs> it's a, just a slight variation. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> no, I, I say, uh, listen, guys, uh, I, I'm, I don't care what you do at this point. Mikasa is Sukasa. Uh, I'm going to go to bed, though. You guys stay as long as you need to. Um, I am totally done, though, though. I've been up since yesterday yeah. cooking food. Uh, I need some rest. I'm going to go to sleep. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to fall, fall asleep here in this chair. And nobody likes someone who falls asleep in the middle of a party. Uh, <laughs> it's not a, no, it's not any better. And that gets the point across, yeah, right? Sure. Like, it, with that, like, I'm not kicking anybody out. You can stay, and honestly, and, and I then do you just that. leave them sitting at the kitchen table with right. your wife. Yeah, exactly. No, I've sent her to her chambers already. Yeah, you've sent her to. Her <laughs> you can't. You can't do that. This is 2012. You can't say things like that. What? What? Um, I no. I I I just I make sure people know that like I'm done communicating my physical and mental and and psychological state. In a way that is clear that, like, you guys are some of my favorite people who I don't want to see right now. Okay. So you, you, here's a little scenario. Oh, no, for mm-hmm. you. Because I know people have missed those. <laughs> uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, all of a sudden, your door creaks open. <laughs> There's a grown man. Okay. He's that one friend and he's okay. just stuck around it. Chuck, Chuck, everybody else is, everybody else is gone and I, I, I'm scared. <laughs> Can you walk me out to my car or you know whatever? What do you right, do? Right. Okay. <laughs> sure, buddy. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> here's Here's a Here's a move that I am a maneuver that I'm fairly familiar with. It's an advanced maneuver. Okay. <laughs> but I come the, from a place called Coolidge, Arizona. We had advanced maneuver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll stop. Go on ahead. Thanks. Um, you're really piling on there. Uh, <laughs> no, this is uh, a move that I have pulled many a time in different situations in my life, and that is the uh, pretend you're asleep really heavily move. Chuck, are you? Are you, Chuck? Are you really asleep? <laughs> but That's- Chuck, I'm scared. <laughs> you just snore louder. <laughs> Oh, oh man, no. if that ever happens, that, that person is never invited over ever again. No <laughs> Well, more. they're never going to leave. Hey, uh, so I say we move on out of this introvert talk. Hopefully that's been helpful to you guys. If you have any additional tips or tricks, uh, feel free. Go to our uh, Facebook page, r- post on our wall. Mm-hmm. Go to our website, companymenpodcast.com. We have a contact page there. Yep. You can let us know. We'd love now. to, we'd love to hear what tips and tricks you may have or answer any questions you might have. Mm-hmm. Um, when we come back, we have the results from last week's date night challenge. Yep. And we are super excited yep. to share those results yep. with you. Yep. Here we go. All right. Going to the break. All right, y'all. Uh, this is where I would usually do a spot for our fake sponsor, but we're in a little bit of a, a, a weird position this week. Um, we, had a, we had a poll last week. Jared, you put up on Facebook uh, yep. uh, for our challenge to see who had a better uh, date night dinner. Well, Chuck, we actually there were we, there were three participants this week, right, and right. Uh, we had two winners and one loser. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And before um, we ever see, started, you'll see I have the results up here. Um, Chuck, you came in strong with twenty five percent of the vote. Yeah. And then I came in stronger at thirty seven point five percent of the vote. I happened to tie uh, with the with there was a there was a third there was a third entrant a third there at the a last third entrant moment. also got thirty seven point five percent of the vote, uh, and that would be Little Caesars. Hot and ready five dollar pizzas. So yep. tonight's and episode. This is uh, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is this is actually a weird bit of um, kind of archaic law. But if uh, if there is a Facebook poll about a segment of a podcast and a pizza company wins that poll, that is this is a binding agreement. This is a legally we have no choice here. But to 
have this episode sponsored by Little Caesars, home of the $5 hot and ready pizza. Yep. Tonight's episode is brought to you by the letter C. Zers. By the, by the this is just the Caesars. And, and so we're gonna we're going to uh what's the word? I'm, we're gonna freestyle this yep. commercial. Yep. All right. We ready? figured that since uh you know Little Caesars um weren't aware that this was happening, um, we would offer up our uh you know wordsmithing prowess mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. some new slogans. Yep. You ready, Chuck? I'm. Okay, tonight's episode is brought to you by Little Caesars Hot and Ready $5 Pizzas. Mm -hmm. They are covered in some kind of cheese, and they have pepperoni. There's also bread somewhere. Yum, yum, tomato sauce. Chuck? You can eat it because it's food. We promise it's food. We promise. Whenever I'm feeling sad, I reach for a slice of Little Caesars pizza. Nothing says rock bottom like that delicious cardboard chewy flavor because of your requirements for a food have nothing to do with taste but more to do with hotness and readiness little caesars has got you covered little caesars has been five dollars uh for that pizza since 1980 the price hasn't changed but you can be sure the ingredients have (laughs) (laughs) little caesars because you shouldn't drink Bud Light Platinum on an empty stomach. <laughs> uh, uh, Little Caesars, for when you want your friends to think there will be pizza at your party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Little Caesars, because when she told you that she loved to cook, she didn't mean for you. <laughs> Little Caesars, because you can't justify spending real money on something you're going to eat by yourself. Little Caesars, because it makes everything else taste better. (laughs) And this has been our... No, no, no. Little Caesars. You got more? For when you spent all of your money on a sous vide cooker and can't afford uh, food. (laughs) Nailed it. <laughs> oh, we love you, Little Caesars. Yeah, you've come through at some of the darkest points in our lives. Yeah, I just don't want it. I just, I just don't want to eat you. I just don't. I kind of do sometimes. Yeah, I kind of do now. Have you ever eaten? Have you it. ever eaten Little Caesars in the car on the way home? I've eaten a whole box if Dude. that counts. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever just gotten your little Caesars and just taken a slice out of the box right there at the cash register and just eaten it slowly in front of the cashier <laughs> and just started making barf sounds but not actually barfing? Yeah, that's my favorite way to consume it. <laughs> and you say things like little Caesars, more like little queasiers. Yep, we're really hitting it out of the park right. on this one. Little Caesars, well done. Way to win a thing. Congratulations, um, little Caesars. I appreciate you not giving me food poisoning sometimes <laughs> you're the best <laughs> thanks we're all over the internet chuck you were we're on all the webs we're all the nets all the grams yep. all the spaces all yep. the books yep many many books and and uh, and several spaces as well okay so we we are we are really in a few different places um instagram we, is neat i learned it for yeah. the first time uh yeah. this week i did it for the very first time and i yeah. was very scared but i made a neat little picture my and grammed it my phone is broken but tomorrow i'm gonna get a uh, i'm getting a new phone and it has better picture taking abilities mm-hmm. and so i will be posting more Mini on instagram up. yeah and uh i really enjoy instagram we're also on facebook uh you find us company men podcast look us up there uh like us and we we share some funny stuff yep and we have good times we're also on twitter we are tweeting pro- up a storm we may be on myspace it's 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 entire it, actually that's kind of a terrifying realization that, that I'm almost definitely still on MySpace. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, oh man, I'm gonna find you. If I I'm not in not. your top eight, sir, I will be furious. <laughs> You're definitely not. I'm not. You no, would I never. Would, no, that'd be weird. If I that would be really weird. 
It's if it, like you before you knew me, put yeah. me on your top eight. Yeah, that would be weird. Almost as weird as what I actually did, which I had Tom. All eight were Tom. <laughs> were they? Really? Yeah, it was all Tom <laughs> all the time. Uh, but Tom so time. yeah, we're not on MySpace. <laughs> are we on anything else? I probably. Who knows? All right, well, those are the big ones: Instagram, Facebook, and a uh, Twitter. Mm-hmm. And so follow us, like us, tweet at us, message us, direct message us. Yep. Comment on our page. Subtweet. Uh, Subtweet, comment, share. Yeah. Direct like, like us. Like you care. Yeah. <laughs> I feel inspired, Chuck, by all of this by all of this tech talk. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna turn that into some some rec talk before you you, you check talk? You check before you wreck? Because it's the rap time? Chuck, what I need is a big fat V. I got I got just what you need. The fattest of beats. The fattest of the beats. <laughs> the beats is actually my favorite band. <laughs> hey, funny. <laughs> There's a real good Doug reference yeah, from the television show. That was Roger. That several people remember. Hey, funny. <laughs> hey, bunny. You get to say it with <laughs> Why anything. Are you saying this? I say it when I see my cash. I say, hey, money. <laughs> Instead of a rap, Jared's going to do this bad impression and rhyme it. <laughs> when my nose is running, I say, hey, runny. <laughs> Give me the fattest of the beats, Chuck. I'm going to lay it down for Let's you. Let's do Here it. We go. Ready? <laughs> hey, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's a tremendous beat. It's, it's, the, it's really, really fat. It's really fat and it's really fast and I'm not that smart. <sighs> uh, I can't come up with things that quick like. <sighs> Slow her down. You really... I'm sorry. A limiter on my, on my beat potential. All right. You're not the first person to say that to me. That's weird. <laughs> All right, go for it. I'm going to pitch you a softball here. Thanks. Here we go. We're cooking lots of meals. We cook a Christmas ham. You can be certain you will find it on our Instagram. Or if you like to comment, like, and share, head on over to Facebook. You will find us there. You like to tweet? Look up foods we eat and check it out. We will tweet all the things that we eat. And uh, MySpace. It's a thing. Still, maybe? Justin My- Timberlake owns it. Yeah, MySpace was a thing that now people hate. But if it were still around, you can guarantee that mo- some of you listeners would be in our top eight. Oh, that was really good. Thanks, I wish Chuck. I was still be. Yeah, I realize now that I beaten. don't need you. <laughs> I'm breaking out on my own. In fact, it's I know like how to beatbox. Seven apps. And I can mm-hmm. rap like the best of them. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna rap and like, we like ra- the rest of them. And like we rap every week. <laughs> uh, I, if you're gonna host alone. I'm so hot right now. Because this <laughs> so home is a billion degrees. <laughs> it's the surface of the sun. Go over to Chuck's house. Hey, Chuck, what are you cooking tonight? You, and you and us, else. we're all going to cook. So hot. W- tonight, we're the fattest of the beats cooking. It's over. In our- okay. it's over. Get Is out. it done? All right. It's done. Get out. You're, all right. I'll see you later, Chuck. Heating it up. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That's your door closing. <laughs> <laughs> That's our, our brains are literally just like melted right now. I can't think straight. <laughs> Mess. This is a wreck. <laughs>